very rich conversation. <laughs> Definitely like to hear about the Buddhist gaze and the Buddhist ear. Very rare opportunity. Yeah, it's a very rare opportunity to have both of them here on the on the Zoom Zoom call right after watching this very kind of amazing movie where we got to see all these good teachers. So uh, first, I just want to mention Ted's website. Um, I have it here on the screen uh, for people to see. Um, you can see that it's onemindproductions.com. And if you go to slash the mountain path, you'll see the actual film where you can um, find a description. You can uh, even support it. I think on his website, there's a place that you can click and say you want to support his films. And he said that it will be available uh, on Vimeo and also on Amazon in the near future. I think Vimeo may be in uh, a few, they said a couple months and then Amazon. Time, Amazon. The other way around. It, it's oh. it's on Vimeo right right now. Okay, I, Vimeo right out. now. Okay. So you can watch yeah. it yeah. again. It's going to take a, another month or so. It's a, please well, share with your friends. Yeah, this this is as Dharma said. This is telling the Dharma story, especially from this this lineage, and mm -hmm. and sharing with others in, around the world, and so also. Um, Ted uh, has a Facebook site, um, facebook.com Edward Berger. I'm going to show the screen here too. So if you want to follow him, you can sign up as a follower. You can also sign up for a newsletter on his website. Um, you can find it here under contacts and uh, kind of join our mailing list. So if you want to find the latest on Ted's films, please sign up and you can get updates. Um, I'll say, is there anything else here? Um, yeah, yeah, so that's for uh, Ted. Mm -hmm. um, on the DRBU side, I wanted to mention that we have a DRBU open house. So if you wanna maybe not go on the mountain path, but wanna go on the university path, which can lead to the mountain path. <laughs> Many of our students you know, go and explore what it's like to live in a monastery after the university experience and vice versa. I mean, the monastic film investigate the university experience. And so there's an open open house happening on Tuesday, oh, November 1st at 630. I think maybe that's the wrong time. But uh, if you find it here on the fall virtual open house, you'll be able to um, essentially see when the next one maybe brenda can help me actually see what the what the time and date is that is oh i see she's put something there oh november 8th 6 30 to 7 30 so um one week after that so tuesday november 8th 6 30 to 7 30 and you can uh, find out you know what it's like to be a drbu student also i wanted to mention that rubber hung Shur and dr martin verhoven uh, two teachers in our tradition um, we'll be having uh, their upcoming classes a little bit themed around this movie, The Mountain Path. So Reverend Hong Shur has a lecture on Friday afternoons from 1 to 2 p.m. Um, it's been on the Song of Enlightenment, but he's going to focus a bit on this movie. And we've been termed it decoding the Dharma. Uh, what we found is oftentimes the Dharma is kind of locked in code words. You know, you know, all these kind of terms that go, what does that actually mean? And so Dharma Master has been really unpacking those in his lectures. And also um, on Friday evening at 7, actually at 8.15 p.m., Dr. Verhoeven will be lecturing. He'll start meditating at 7.30 if you wish to join. And that one he's titled the, the, the talk. The Mountain and Me? The, yeah, The Mountain and Me getting lost in the way. And he'll actually be broadcasting from Redwood Vihara, um, which is yeah, in the forest. So, and in the mountains. In the mountains, in the Santa Cruz mountains. And so you will get a email follow-up uh, if you sign up for this event for all those information for those, those uh, talks. Otherwise, you can find it at the berkeleymonastery.org website. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of comments too. So let me do the comments first and then the questions. So Ted... Uh, someone says, Ami uh, Tofu, can we watch this again? And I think we've answered that one. Uh, it's available, <coughs> excuse me, on uh, Ted's website, 
there's his links to Vimeo, and it will be available on Amazon before long. Uh, and uh, any donations or support would be much appreciated. Um, the Sudana Center residents say thank you for that. Um, uh, let's see here. There's a long name I can't identify. I fell in love with Among White Clouds. I can't believe that you are here with us. <laughs> Come down from the white clouds to be among us. Good. So um, let's see. This was an inspiring film. Thank you. Uh, and then we have Ami <laughs> Uh Let's see. Ami Tofo, Ching Wan Dao Yan, Ni Ze Guan Wang, Di Zhi. Okay, Yi Jing Gao is Somebody wants to know your website. And um, let's see. Can we? That was One Mind Productions. Yeah, I'll chat box. Okay. 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 Uh, let's see. More comments here. Uh, thank you. Very inspirational. Namo uh, Omitofo. Okay. Starting with the, the questions then, Ted. It's been 20 years. How are the hermits doing today? Have you seen them since? Um, for, for many years after I made the, I, after I made the film, for several years, I was continuing to go back to those mountains to study with my shrupal. And since I knew the other hermits, I would make my way over the into the other valleys and find them. And um, uh, some of them uh, are still there. Others have gone back to their monastery. I know I I uh, met the the nun from Canton uh, at. Um, I can't remember the name of the monastery, but we, we, we I, I saw her and she was back in the community um, after, I think, seven years or eight years on the mountain. I think that's mm. just um, something like that. So, yeah, there. Uh, but I have not been in the last. Uh, well, what is that? Ten years. Um, mm -hmm. um, so I can't say with any detail, um, but I have heard that the tradition is. Um, still as of course it's still strong and it's growing stronger and i know that the um the monastic community is changing a lot so mm -hmm. the community also is changing a lot the background of the practitioners um uh it, it is is changing and the, mm -hmm. the life that they lived before they became monastics or became hermits is changing so uh there's lots to 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 know there but i i can't say from my experience yeah okay let's there's a bunch of questions coming in let's do a kind of a rapid fire here um ted did you find any of the mountain monks you met to be inauthentic no 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 um no i can't think no i i, I felt everyone that i met was an authentic practitioner they they were on in many different If I dare say, I, I, the, every, the, there are different, um, different stages of the practice for, for, for certain, but it's pretty hard to, at least at the time when I was going into those mountains, if you make it through your first winter, you're authentic. I mean, your re, your motivations are authentic. It's bitter. Make it, you know, because it's just too hard. It, there's yeah, too. Hard much to learn and there's just there's so much uh you know yeah yeah okay um how did you translate in yuan or yuan fun as the great unfolding mm. I, that that strikes me as an inspired translation the alternatives are you know affinities or ties or connections or something the great unfolding or unfolding and there i think there are two terms what you actually translated was yuan fun as a great as that was the, the the last hermit with the with the sharp eyes, mm -hmm. uh, and this this question was yin yuan or did, did you do both yin yuan and yuan fun as unfolding? I'd have to I'd have to look closely. Uh, I probably, think yuan fun. probably. Um, but uh, I think as with many of these terms that as 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 Buddhists as Chinese speaking Buddhists are familiar with the breadth of the meaning behind these terms um, is uh, 
natural and embodied in the word itself. When you say yuan fai, when you say yin yuan, it's it's it, you 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 know that breadth of meaning. To translate it into English is um, really difficult because it kind of means something different in different contexts and different right. usages. It, uh, so I felt that in this particular film unfolding. Um, the idea that um, the idea that uh, life is uh, it always an emerging creative process, and and we're we're in that flow, uh, and it's unfolding ahead of us in the sense that you can't see what's what's in in that, but when as it rolls out, you're 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 discovering it. And that's yeah. the experience that I wanted to embody, and that's what I felt like he 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 was he wanted to say. So that's how I translated it. Nice. It is um, a poetic translation. It's not technical, but I think I'm it, glad. But it's an inspired translation because <laughs> it's it's ongoing. It's a it's a very there's breath and blood and steps. There's mm -hmm. footsteps in that that uh, translation. Uh, is there a part of Chinese Buddhist culture? Or Chinese culture or Buddhist culture that attracts you the most? Hmm. Um, I, think a lot, I think a lot. I think a lot. Sorry, what? Say these are not my questions. I'm I'm yeah, yeah. filtering <laughs> them off off the chat box. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, um, um, I mean, I mean that. I think kar karmically. Uh, or in terms of Yen Fan, I think the, the 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 affinity was that was there for me with with uh, Chan, and because when I uh, read the poems uh, and I I didn't understand I didn't know what Dharma was, but I read the poems and the resonance was there and it took me into the path. So that that's there, but um, um, um I, it's just the it's it's the it's the you could say the food yeah. and, and you could say the food and punt the football back. Okay, yeah, yeah, I love the food. <laughs> That's true, actually. That's true. Um, I think it's just the it's it's the sheer um, depth of the tradition and the maturity of of uh, the thorough evolution of of the Dharma in China what I made contact with was um, I didn't become a hermit and I didn't become a monastic, but I practiced in those environments because I wanted to li live the Dharma and these people who are living the Dharma. And so I can take that into my life outside and in my, in my life as a layman and, um, and learn those things. And it just, the, it just runs so deep and the, and the art, the poetry, the landscape paintings, the the architecture, the iconography. Mm. I just, I love all of it. And that's what brought me in to the Dharma in the first place. Beautiful. Okay, this is an interesting question. Um, would this precious mountain Chan lineage be diluted if it was brought down the mountain and brought to more people? Or should it be kept somewhere inaccessible like this and preserved? Can How can people like us access these mountain teachers? Thank you. I think that pro that question resolves itself because um, the the life of a hermit practitioner can't. I mean, as they live it, uh, can't go, can't be anywhere else uh, because they're in the, that's what they're that's the life they're living. And I think that um, as a as a layman who's spent time there and now lives my life. Um, beyond there um, that's the essential quality that I that I try to carry with me this is where I am and this is where I practice it's a it's a pure land and the Dharma is emanating from everything uh, and whether you're here or there right so um, in some sense, that's the thing that I try to carry with me. Uh, that um, there, I'm I'm here, and this is my practice. And what's in front of me, unfolding in front of me, is exactly what 
I need to practice with. That's the stuff of practice. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Jin Chuan Jin Wei, you could say, stop me before I ask again, right? Okay. So maybe we go to maybe 9, 9.05 9 ish. 9.05 ish, or... good. Okay, good. We got a bunch of great questions. And if I will say, if we, if we don't get to your question, um, Ted, Ted Berger's website has a contact form and you can ask directly. Um, Alan says, during the conversation of ascetic practice, um, you mentioned something like the Dharma is not just intellectual understanding, it's how you experience through your life. I really appreciate this answer and you show the principle in your films. Thank you so much. You made the Dharma come alive in your film. Um, let's see here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what did he mean about nature being delusional? Uh, yeah. Touched on that before. Um, I think re yeah. briefly that it, he was speaking to me in that moment. Uh, and, and, um, I left it. There's very, very few cuts in that. And I wanted it to just feel like, I mean, you can see, I, I walk up to him and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm asking him, Hey, can you tell me something about this? You know? And he's like, Oh man, you know, I, yes. <laughs> I say, you know, so, yeah. So in my mind, when I look back on that, it's not so much that it's, it's important to understand what he means by that as much as, um, though one could certainly inquire into that uh, notion, but I think in the moment he was just trying to, he saw me as an earnest, but naive <laughs> young practitioner. And he was uh, doing his best to um, dis dislodge yeah. me. Mm. Yeah, good. Uh, a couple of appreciative comments. On film, there's a noticeable and inspiring physical difference between the monks and the rest of us. There's a genuine happiness in their faces mm. and deep wisdom in their eyes. When they speak, you can hear the sincerity and depth of their experience. I was hoping you could elaborate on what else you noticed firsthand. Thank you so much for sharing this inspirational film with us. I. When I, going to China to to practice Chan and going straight to the to the mountains to find a teacher um, was because in my mind at the time I thought okay <laughs> if there's serious practitioners this is where I'm going to find them now my my viewpoint has broadened greatly since then and I've spent time in the monasteries uh, and likewise so but um, uh, I will say that. Um, the um, the well what did i so what what did i experience with these teachers uh again it was on lots of different levels um as some some of them we really connected with a practice itself as much as i could connect to their practice and where they were at um I'm I'm very fortunate to have this footage because I I can go back to it years later and learn something totally new. It's almost like I've gone back again. Oh, right. are we? So, up? Ditto. No, ditto. I me too. Telling me we're up in, we're time. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's and that's how practice goes. And that's what the Sherpa at the end of the film says. You know, you go back, you read, you say, "Oh yeah, that's where I'm at." And then you read something else, and you go, "What?" And then you have to practice more. And and so that's just the process. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I the, these are these are these are really beautiful beautiful uh, in, uh, spiritual individuals to be with, and I just know that I I would wa I walked in uh, as a foreigner with a camera, uh, and yet they they could see you know the some value in what I was doing. And um, they were just so open-hearted and so generous, you know, to spend so much time with me uh, while, you know, while I'm setting up my camera and then sitting down and answering all my questions, you know, yeah. on and on. it's just the generosity there is really right. profound. Right. And then it's time to eat and, yeah. Oh, you dropped in off uh, out of the mountains? Sure. Come on, let's have some noodles. Yeah, okay. yeah we were we were always well fed. <laughs> uh, 
so let's see here. I've read uh, these are two comments, same the same statement, one in Chinese. I've read from some leading magazines in China that the hermit lifestyle in Zhongnan Mountains has become more and more popular among the younger generations. And then another person says, uh, 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 Gotta get a little closer here. 在继续之而不仅仅是在中南山，对这些时修行者一直都有的，呃，片中这些知识一角. He says, um, in fact, in China, in Chinese Buddhist tradition, there's lots of cultivators in the mountains, um, not only on Zhongnan Mountain, but what we see in the film is just a one one corner that you can lift up. So that's that's uh, encouraging. Barbara wants to know: Have any of the hermits seen your film or any of the footage? What did they think? He she saw one monk watching you film. Oh yeah. So uh, yes, some of them have seen the film uh, and the and the footage. Some not. Uh, again, broad spectrum of responses to the actual finished project. Uh, the ascetic monk that I named Hanshan, he he said, "No, nah, <laughs> I don't need to see that." You know, I you know it, it, he he wasn't that interested. But uh, but the other but the other hermits were, and they were able to celebrate it uh, uh, as well and um, and see the value in it. I I should say that though Hanshan was very austere, he I did ask him at one point, "Well, what do you think of me?" coming in here with a camera and all this gear and equipment. And he said, um, what, he, what did he say exactly? But he basically said, well, if you're, you're, I, th I think you're trying to, uh, to, um, I don't know, share the Dharma and, and that's good. And I was, and I felt very, uh, very uh, affirmed by that so, because if yeah. anyone can yeah. tell me uh, why, why bother, uh, right. You know, with this filmmaking stuff, it that would have, that would have like, cut deep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You. One last one, and this this is a, a personal question, Ted, from Alice. She says, "Are there any specific changes you made in your life or impacts that have that you have experienced from spending time with the hermits?" Where to start? Um, that's a good question. It's a combination of the time I spent with the hermits and the time I spent at Jen Wu Chan Su and, and Bai Lin Su and other monasteries. Um, again, and and my recent recently I lived in Myanmar, uh, and you know public life in Myanmar you're just embraced by by Dharma, and I think what I've learned and what I try to express through my art through my films is um again how how the dharma is lived as an individual as a community in a city and a mountain in different landscapes it's how i've my my practice has changed profoundly because of what i learned from those traditions and I feel very fortunate that I've had contact with these traditions, and and um, and it's why I feel so comfortable at Berkeley Buddhist Monastery, because that's you know it's that space that's so familiar, and 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 I've been in that space, and it's it's changed my life, and it's you know I owe everything to it, so mm. it's it's changed a lot of things. I don't know how to pinpoint exactly, but. Got it. Yeah. I have a blog uh, where I have some writing about these kinds of things. Maybe there's something in there that would be interesting. Okay. So uh, we didn't get everybody's question in. There were some questions about, uh, you know, we as beginners, where do we go from here? But I would just point you to Ted's blog, point you to DRBU to say that Master Shen Hua, if as the Lu Mei Gao Sung, the noble monk who came to the West, He's uh, 
his spirit is alive at uh, City of Ten Thousand Buddhas at Berkeley at at the uh, Dharma Room Buddhist University. Our sponsors today, so that's a great place to begin. Ted, thank you so much. Just tremendous. Uh, and the uh, I really value uh, our friendship. Two guys from Ohio who walk different paths, but are still, you know, climbing the same mountains. So uh, look forward to uh, your next journey, and and uh, hope that. Uh, your camera and your microphone are right there to, to share it with us in the future. Uh, thank you so much. It's, it's, I, I meant to say earlier, it's so meaningful to me that, um, that this community um, uh, sees value in the work that I'm doing and, 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 and enjoys it and is inspired by it. Uh, that is tremendously meaningful to me and affirming. So it's beautiful. Thank and and having being invited to to do something like this and talk to everyone. Um, this is it's really very meaningful for me. Really um, profound. So thank you. <laughs> All right, and thanks to Agnes as well for for her her contribution to this work. Yes, of course, yes. Thank you. To, to finished. Also, I want to thank you all of you for this honest and engaging participation. This was like a session, meditative session of watching the movie and reflecting. And I think this is a very rich event and evening for all of us. Mm -hmm. And in the end, we can say, maybe if you wish to uh, unmute yourself and say uh, hi or say thank you or say bye or uh, any way you want to uh, express the gratitude if you have in your heart. And I think many of us have, and it could be a gesture. <laughs> a rejoicing gesture. Rejoicing <laughs> gesture is a rejoicing mudita. Uh, <laughs> mantra, uh, mudra. <laughs> mudra. So thank you. Thank you again for your uh, being with us and see you again with others, events and, and movies. <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so 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 much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.